Is this Toyota Supra a bit of a turd? No, I don't actually mean one of those kind of turds. I meant T-R-D, T-R-D, Toyota Racing Development. It's actually one of only 35 Mark IV Supra TRDs ever made in the world. It's very exclusive, it's very expensive, and that's why today I'm gonna hoon it around like a complete moron. I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from zero to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. I'm gonna brake test it. I'm going to see how loud it is. I'm also going to talk you through just how much power this car has because obviously it's not standard. I'm also going to talk you through the upgrades that the normal TRD has over the standard Supra as well as explaining some of the extras that the owner has put on this rather expensive car. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off with a bit of history about this car. So back in 1994, Toyota was competing in the Japanese Touring Car Championships with a Supra, and they decided to do a road going version. So they basically took a lot of the body panels that were honed in the wind tunnel off that racing Supra, fitted it to 35 road going Supras to create this wide body look. So it was actually a factory built car, and it was called the TRD 3000 GT only 35 made, only 16 still around today, only two in the UK, of which this is one of them, number 29 overall. It's owned by a chap called Billy Akhtar, and if you want to find out more about this car, you can check out his Instagram, Supra29TRD. Prices for one of these just depends on what someone's willing to pay. It will easily start from over £70,000 because Mark IV Supras fetch so much money these days. What it would rise to, who knows? Let's talk about the design changes to this car. The TRD version of the Supra got a big rear wing. In fact, there's two designs. This one, or one with a third leg. Got some TRD badging and also a redesigned rear bump, which was a bit more aggressive. The owner, Billy, has added his own touches, such as some LED tail lights, this diffuser and a Formula One star rain light. And the most obvious thing, which is now pretty much on everybody's Mark IV Supra. It's a huge exhaust. This one's a Greddy system. It's titanium and I need to test it. So I'm sorry about this, Billy. We're on car while it's mandatory. Sick of truth. Well, log of truth. Oh, yeah. That goes in there so easily. Oh, yeah. Feels good. Yeah, that's enough of that. Some of the biggest changes to the TRD Supra here at the side. It's got widened wheel arches at the front and at the back. It gives you a 50 millimeter wider track at the front, 60 mil at the back. And that allowed Toyota to fit some bigger wheels with larger, wider tires for more grip. Though, of course, Billy has upgraded these wheels. So these are Volks Racing TE37 wheels, which are very popular in the tuner world, apparently. Another feature that you got with the TRD was some vents here to a cooling and vent here to a cooling to the rear diff. Once again, Billy has added his own touches to it. A carbon fiber side skirt here, these smaller door mirrors. I think that's it. Well, obviously <laughs> the color scheme. If you're not a total Toyota Mark IV Supra fanboy, you may think that Billy has done quite a lot of work to this car's front. But actually, this is how it came from the factory. It got this completely new front bumper design with huge air intakes to really feed loads of air into the engine and also into this diffuser here because the underside of the car is flatter than the normal Supra for improved downforce. They even got rid of the Toyota badge to improve aerodynamics. Then you've got this bonnet that has these huge vents cut out of it. Now, they actually have backing panels to them at the moment, but you can quite simply remove them within a minute if you want to go on track you need that extra cooling into the engine it's not like the way Toyota say you can remove the panels on the new Supra to cool the engine you can't really unless you've got like an angle grinder this can be removed it's proper the only real changes that Billy has added to this car are the lights you can see these LED ring lights there other than that this is how it came out the factory which is pretty insane on the inside, the TRD Supra had a couple of upgrades. A TRD racing steering wheel, which is pretty nice. Some TRD dials and a TRD knob. <laughs> However, Billy has added his own touches, including full Alcantara trim, Braum racing seats, a load of gauges, dials and stuff, some Momo pedals and an Alpine stereo, which has a 1000 watt amp. Two 1800 watt subwoofers 
and 12 extra speakers. In fact, that whole sound system takes up quite a lot of the boot and the back seats. That's why there's no back seats there anymore. Just music equipment. The TRD Supra got a rated suspension to help improve cornering, but Billy has fitted an air lift system to this car, so you can raise it up if you need to go over speed humps, which is handy if you're driving around town and you don't want to bottom out, or if you're at a Toyota car meet, you can slam it so you look the part. Oh, that is slammed, <laughs> that is proper slammed. Though you're yeah, not going to want to drive around like that, so you're probably better off having it somewhere in between. The TRD Supra just got the same brakes as the normal Supra, but these have been upgraded, obviously. So these are D2 brakes, and you've got eight piston calipers and 380 millimeter discs here at the front. Let's see just how strong they are. Okay, let's see what these brakes are like. Brake test from 70 miles an hour. Oh, stopped from 70 miles an hour in 46 meters, which is, I think I could do better. It's just that these brakes aren't that servo assisted in the way that modern cars are. So maybe I could have pushed the pedal harder. Acceptable. Listen, don't worry. That is gonna be the launch coming up soon. So bear with me for that and some hooliganism. Let's crack on. The reason everyone loves a Mark IV Supra is because of this, the famous 2JZ engine or 2JZ if you're American. Three litre, twin turbo, straight six. As standard, it put out 326 horsepower. 441 newton meters of torque, not massive. However, it does have massive tuning potential. And as you can see, this car has been tuned somewhat. So let me just run you through all the things that have been added to this car. And I'm gonna have to read them off my phone because there's so many. For starters, it's got a Greddy TD05 twin turbo kit with external wastegates, triple plate RPS carbon clutch, Svex plug and play ECU, AM 3.5 bar map sensor, FIC 1200cc injectors, Toucan touch display, Greddy front mount intercooler kit, aeromotive fuel pressure regulator with Goodridge braided lines and fittings, HKS 280 cams, HKS cam pulleys, twin fan conversion, alloy tensioner pulley, Greddy alloy top hose, twin HKS air filters, Greddy cooling plate, Bosch knock sensor for Svex, Boost control solenoid, aeromotive FPR kit with gauge, SRD top fed line kit, the result, well, this car puts out 700 horsepower at the flywheel, but Billy don't want to stop there. He actually wants to take it all the way up to 1500 horsepower. I want to see what it's like just with 700. So let's take it for a spin. A lot of the new cars I test these days have soft limiters. So you can't really experience the exhaust noise when you're stationary. I'm guessing this doesn't have a soft limiter, but let's find out. Yeah, I just needed to be sure. But no, it doesn't. And now it's time to behave like a hooligan in someone else's pride and joy. Sorry about this, Billy. Let's see what it's like. Oh yeah. They'll go sideways and pop at you as you're doing it. Sorry. Don't ever lend a car to me, whatever you do. Now let's go test it out on track. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Now I'm gonna launch the car in a bit, but first I just wanna have a little bit of a drive. I love the way the turbos come in. First turbo comes in around four. Here it is, building. Oh, that's nice. Then the second one comes now. And we're flying. Whoa, that is awesome. I'm loving this. Now I drove a Super Mark IV, which had been tuned to over a thousand horsepower. And that was a little bit too scary for me, if I'm brutally honest. Oh, Christ. So if you click on the pop-out banner, you can see just why I'm so frightened by it. This, this is perfect for me. I want to do it again. Right, here we go. First turbo. Oh, that's nice. Second turbo. Oh! Oh, and the rev limiter! <laughs> this is what I'm going to miss with electric cars. Electric motors all just feel the same. This engine has so much character. 
so many different parts to it. The first part when you're off boost and it's still nice and you come into first turbo, then second turbo, then all the noises. This is lovely. I like the gear shift as well. I tell you what's also impressed me, the handling. This air ride's really good. It turns sharper than the other Mark IV Supers I've actually driven and the ride over the bumps. It just irons them out so well. It's surprisingly comfy. Oh, here we go again. Oh, second turbo. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was just going over the top of a hill that I thought I was going to take off. I need to be able to give Billy his car back in one piece. Behave. Actually, don't behave. Let's launch it. I'm going to go easy on the clutch. So it's not going to be the best time, but I'm just going to experience what it feels like. Oh, that bogged. That was my fault. That was rubbish. Whoa! Because I didn't have the first turbo spooling. It just bogged. I was just nowhere on the launch. I think I should do it again, don't you? <sighs> Sorry, Billy. Bogged a bit again. Come on. Come on! Come on! What are we going to do? 5.35 better! Quarter mile! Right, 13.35. Woof! So 13.35 for the quarter mile, 5.35 on the launch. I nannied it off the line, and so my gear shifts weren't great. But still, that time isn't too bad, <laughs> considering I wasn't great at it. And once it's on boost, this thing just flies. It's not even got half the power it's going to end up with. If you want me to get this back when it's at the full 1500 horsepower, let me know in the comments below. I want to, or they will frighten me. So then what's my final verdict on this tuned TRD 3000 GT? Well, do you know what? It's my favorite Mark IV Supra that I have driven. I think the balance of the tuning and the body styling is just right. Now, I know you've all been complaining in the comments, going, oh my God, that launch and quarter mile time were crap. Yeah, I was just being really careful with this car because I didn't want to give it back to Billy, like with the clutching bits and the bottom end all kind of out of shape. I just couldn't do that to him. However, he's having the engine built. He's going to take it up to 1500 horsepower, hopefully. And then he says, I can be as brutal as I want with the clutch. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you will not miss when I drive this thing fully maxed out. Thanks for watching.